In a recent Substack piece, Lee Fong reports that back in January of 2000, MSNBC host Mehdi Hassan authored a column in defense of spanking children, No Harm in Smacking, that is nearly a word-for-word -word duplication of the article When to Spank, published two years earlier in U.S. News & World Report. Here to discuss is author and journalist Lee Fong. Welcome, Lee. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, this this is a wild one. I look. I remember the days when you, me, Medi, Glenn <laughs> used to be all together under one Christmas party roof at the Intercept, and now it well, seems that sounds like, like fun times. <laughs> <laughs> so much has happened since then. Obviously, let's go back to the beginning of this dispute. Which would you be? Would it be fair to say? Uh, happened around uh, Taimi's interview with Mehdi Hassan over the Twitter files, uh, then spilled out over into some accusations that Mehdi Hassan made about you as you defended Matt Taibbi's Twitter files reporting. And now there's this follow-up reporting uh, on uh, Mehdi Hassan's previous journalistic mistakes, shall we call it. How, how, how do you see all of this as playing out? Look, um, I think there's a, a big focus on what on the TV interview between Taibbi and Mehdi Hassan, but the most serious allegation came after the interview. On Twitter, after that interview, Mehdi Hassan accused Matt Taibbi of perjury, of lying under oath mm -hmm. to Congress. You know, that's a felony with prison time. That's what Michael Cohen uh, was uh, convicted of with prison time. That's what Roger Stone was convicted of. Um, that's a very serious offense. And, you know, Mehdi made this very scurrilous charge and claimed that Taibbi was wrong when he said that an arm of uh, the Department of Homeland Security was involved with a, an NGO in contacting Twitter during the 2020 election for censorship actions for you know content moderation policies. And look, I've reported on this even before the Twitter files. I've looked, you know, for weeks at this issue, at you know hundreds if not thousands of documents, and I simply corrected the record. I said that Matt Taibbi, in his congressional testimony, was 100% accurate. I published new documents, new emails. I surfaced old reporting that I've done. You know, I did a very detailed uh, response to this allegation that Matt Taibbi lied under oath, that, that Mehdi uh, lodged. Um, rather than a, a, a substantive response uh, to my reporting, um, Mehdi went into the gutter. Uh, he started claiming that I was a careerist, that I'm a liar, and, you know, that I'm an Islamophobic bigot, which is the most absurd claim possible, you know, absolutely baseless claim. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of readers encouraged me to um, look into Mehdi's uh, career and into his background, that a lot of these claims against me were cases of projection. Um, so, and that's what I did. You know, at my Substack, uh, I went back uh, into 20 years of, of Mehdi's writing, um, you know, finding lots of cases of, I think, very sloppy citation or straight up plagiarism and the, the exact type of career, careerism that I think people find problematic in journalism, that rather than having a principled approach to the news, to journalism, um, Mehdi has, has switched his, his positions and taken whatever uh, kind of value is convenient for advancing his career. You know, someone who claimed to be against abortion and, you know, uh, against abortion rights suddenly flip flops on that and now uh, demonizes anyone who's, who's anti-abortion as, you know, motivated by white supremacy and racism. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit absurd. And I, I would just encourage anyone to read my Substack, take a look at the allegations, it, you know, there's a, a particularly intellectually lazy form of journalism that that Medi kind of specializes in, and I think the plagiarism examples speak to that. Right, and uh, I think Matt Taibbi in his exchange with Medi a, a little bit tried to, you know, point out well, well, while MSNBC was, you know, what what did you do to correct the record when MSNBC was saying all sorts of things about RussiaGate, for instance, and he tried to say he did had nothing to do with that, and I think maybe you or Matt or someone, maybe it was Glenn, someone found some examples of him doing um, I I exactly that. So, you know, we're not trying to to undermine the guy in a vacuum or something, like go back 20 years ago to find uh, something he did wrong, but he was very much harping on Matt for um, for these you know couple um, errors that Matt acknowledged and then corrected, and then especially the thing you pointed out, it's absolutely true is it, from you know looking at what you've reported and and, and others that that this um, that the, the 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 two. Uh, agencies involved the the government agency and the nonprofit and and many tried to suggest that it was just well you 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 know transpose the two but both were involved in this project of flagging um, tweets on behalf of the government. No, I, I find this kind of all very despicable. Look, we all get things wrong in our journalism. I, I think what 
how, how we act as journalists is how quickly we move to correct the record and, and really explain the truth. You know, I mean, it's reporting on, on these kind of complicated issues can be messy. It can be difficult. But, you know, Matt Taibbi in one tweet uh, mixed up one acronym and he quickly corrected the record. Mehdi has engaged in many lies in this whole process. You know, lying about never talking about the Hunter Biden laptop. He did. Uh, lying about, you know, never kind of like reporting on the, on this kind of some of these more scurrilous Russia uh, gate allegations. He did. And then the most serious allegation here is that Matt Taibbi lied uh, under oath to Congress. And this is a claim that Mehdi's repeated over and over again. This, again, this is perjury. This is serious stuff. This is, you know, after Mehdi made this claim, AOC then retweeted and, 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 and said, you know, look, look, let's kind of undermine all of the, the Twitter files reporting. You know, this, this is kind of like very petty, personalized attacks. Uh, and that aren't true. You know, like this claim that uh, Matt Tybee got it wrong. I've demonstrably showed that Tybee was right when, when talking about CISA, this, this arm of the Department of Homeland Security that was highly involved in content moderation policies at Facebook and Twitter and other social media companies, um, you know, really highly embedded in, the, in these firms and, and pressuring them on a, on a regular basis. And Betty, uh, you know, quickly claiming that this was a lie and this undermined the entire thesis of the Twitter files. Look, you know, I've reported on the t on Twitter documents. Uh, many other reporters have. I think this is a kind of juvenile attempt to obscure the actual contents of the revelations, the reporting. Um, this attempt to discredit all the journalism because of one error in one tweet. Uh, it, you know, I, I, I find it very distasteful. Yeah, Lee, I, I, I got to say, I found your reporting on the Twitter files in particular one of my favorite reads. It was so substantive. And one of the most frustrating aspects of watching the interview with Taibi and Mehdi was the failure of Mehdi to really engage in the substance and the value, the broader value of the Twitter files, despite any mistake that might exist here or there. So to that end, I want to ask you, you know, very shortly after that interview, of course, um, Matt Taibbi and Elon Musk seem to get into their own dispute about the nature of uh, Substack and Matt Taibbi's relationship with them. And uh, in a Twitter Live last week, uh, Elon Musk said that all good things basically have to come to an end and that the Twitter files is basically over. I know that Matt Taibbi was planning before that to hire journalists to continue the work uh, on the files, including Aaron Mate. And I believe you have now left The Intercept and are working uh, over at Substack. Are there any plans to continue reporting on the Twitter files? Yeah, I have um, a lot of research. I was only, I visited Twitter for a few days in late December and early January, and um, I was able to write down and copy a lot of information. So I have more stories coming. You know, I've reported on the Pentagon's uh, kind of covert ops influence operations. They had this gigantic network of fake accounts and fake news sites on the Middle East that were parroting the the Pentagon's line and trying to shape Middle East opinion with complete secrecy that and, and that Twitter had full knowledge of this operation that even created a, a special kind of bot or this whitelist bot that um, kind of amplified these accounts. And at the same time, Twitter was telling the public that they were doing everything they could to shut down every state back influence operation that, that you know, anytime any government does this, they, they'll shut it down. No, they were working as a concierge service for the Pentagon to spread the Pentagon's propaganda. On, on wars in, in Yemen and, and Syria and beyond. Um, and I've also looked at how um, pharmaceutical companies were lobbying uh, Twitter for censorship, that they that a pharmaceutical funded uh, group had backdoor access and, and were shaping some of the content de decisions in terms of shadow banning and, and blocking certain counts that were critical of certain COVID policies. But I'm just getting started. There's gonna be more there. I, don't, I can't really speak towards uh, you know, what Elon Musk will or won't do. It kind of doesn't matter for my reporting. I'd love to have more access, um, but, you know, we'll see, TBD. Um, but I have more material and more reporting to come. Mm. Well, we look forward very much to reading that. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Take and care. I should, I should mention that we uh, did reach out to Mehdi Hassan via MSNBC for comment and invited him on the show at any time. We haven't heard back yet. Uh, we'll see you later, Lee. Hey, take care.